to Turning the Page. I'm host Donnie Morse of Confetti Antiques and Books, and today we are pleased to have Larry Mullins. Larry has written a new book, uh, Bodyguard to the Prophet, and it is an exciting story, a true life story, of Larry's experiences as a bodyguard to the LDS prophet Spencer W. Kimball. Larry, welcome to the program today. Thank you. I'd like to start, Larry, tell us a little bit about uh, who you are, about uh, your childhood and where you grew up and, and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm a Utah boy. I, okay. I grew up uh, in Utah. I, uh, my family were ranchers, and so I grew up all over Utah. <laughs> and then my paternal grandmother had me part of the time, so it was for you went a basin part of the time. and and uh, Utah County, uh, Sam Pete County. I see. So you had kind of a colorful childhood, mm -hmm. uh, growing up on the ranches here in Utah. Now, uh, like most young men your age, you turned 18, and where did you want to go? Well, I, I, I went in the Army. So the draft was coming up, Korean War. So you decided, I enlisted. Uh, Better to enlist and have some choices rather than be drafted I enlisted, by enlisted. After I got in, some of those choices stayed with me. So, as it turned out for me, it was a good, it was a good decision. Now, probably one of my favorite parts of the book, Larry, is the fact that uh, you say that throughout your adult life, your military service, and that you felt that the Lord was looking out for you. He was preparing you for something bigger. That uh, the preparation you received as a military man is really what helped you get ready to be the bodyguard for the prophet. Interestingly enough, as a young man, I didn't necessarily feel that. But later on in life, I began to see where things that had happened in the past had, uh, had been planned. I did a whole, whole number of things in the Army that uh, I thought was just part of being in the Army. Turned out it was preparation for this. Something more, sure this book and the experience that I had there. Anyone that's been in the Army will know that if you, if you do well enough, and, and, and there's a lot, of, um, a lot that you go through, that is each, each uh, installation will put up about 500 people and test them and they'll get down to about anywhere between 10 and 20 um, that pass the test at that level. And then they'll send them on to the main test, and you start all over again with another 500 people from all over the United States. To be quite honest with you, I really didn't even think much about passing. I was just having a great time, and I was enjoying the things they were having me do, and, and next thing I know, I'm up on the stand receiving my award. One out of 20 guys. So were they all privates? All no, 20? 20 guys were almost all officers. So you were the only private out of that group to yeah. receive that award. Now, for those out in the audience, that would be like the, the top gun? Is that? Yeah. And in the, in the... Kind of like the top gun in the movie. Wow. And one of the nice things about it was that it, uh, it gave you an immediate promotion. Gave you a stripe. Uh-huh and uh, gave you an opportunity to say, uh, I'd like to go somewhere. Oh, choose where you're assigned. And, uh, you know, that was right at the time when you didn't get a lot of choices. You went, kind of went where you were, where they had you pointed. And um, I wanted to go where the action was, and, and that was just boiling down in Korea, and I thought that would be the way to go, and I got as far as Fort Dix. Got all lined up at the ship to, to uh, sail at least as far as Germany, and, and uh, they came again and pulled a group of us out, um, and they sent us to Panama. So they sent me, uh, and not only just to Panama, but they sent me to a place called Jungle Warfare Training Center. And the whole job was to train people how to operate in the jungle. And they sent us the people. Uh, and they would send us a, a, a brigade. When they, when they sent me to uh, Panama, I wasn't there too long. And uh, they were getting ready for their uh, 
uh, jungle experts. So with the uh, with the uh, infantry experts and jungle experts, patch. I pretty well could call my own shots. All the trainers were officers except for me. I did a lot of jungle survival. As a young man, my grandfather had taken me all through the Wasatch Mountains here and tried to teach me all of the things that he thought were disappearing and people were forgetting. And while I was doing that, uh, I impressed the officer in charge. He wanted me to act as, very much as a bodyguard. And I uh, hadn't had a lot of training in that area, and so for the next six months, he just sent me everywhere he could think of to get me trained to take care of him. I got down to the point in time when I had a couple of months left, and, and uh, my grandmother had a stroke, and they brought me back a little bit early. And once I was back here in Utah County, I uh, decided to leave the Army. <laughs> so the survivalist training you received in the Army and the bodyguard experience, you found yourself at BYU. Yeah, found myself, not, not initially. No, not initially. So you had your, you were at BYU in the survivalist program, and uh, the church approached you to come. Well, I had, I had developed something of a, of a name as a, as a program designer, and uh, they asked me if I would come and design training, just for their, you know, Temple Square guards, and they asked me if I could put together some kind of a section just for the prophet. So they had church security, but it was kind of a loose-knit group well, of guys who were in charge of just overall was, general. Yeah, it was always security in the sense of securing facilities. And the, that really had that really made good sense in terms of um, insurance and other things sure. like that. And what time are we talking about? This is early 70s? Late 69. President Lee was prophet at this time. President Lee was prophet at that time. So they asked you to put together the, uh, the training packet, basically. And they were getting letters from uh, several different groups, and so they decided they needed to be serious about this. So everyone had always, even to this very day, says, well, who you get, you get the guys in the FBI and CIA and policemen and so forth. But uh, you didn't have any of that training? There, well, no, I had served for some time in in uh, Daggett County as yeah, so. a police officer, mm -hmm. yeah. But the thing of it is, you don't get trained to do bodyguard work. There's really only one agency that does, and that's the Secret Service. And their whole business is bodyguard work. Bodyguard the President of the United States. And I thought, well, you know, I think I'll go talk to the folks over there and see what I get out of them. I thought, you know, gee, I might get a manual or I might get who knows what. Larry, let me interrupt you here. We're going to take a commercial break. We're here with Larry Mullins uh, talking about his new book, Bodyguard to the Prophet, and we'll be right back.